Hi there, it's Mr. Clark. Welcome to lesson 7.3.1 on voice leading 4. So, we in the last section we talked about the basic phrase model where we have our tonic and then dominant and then tonic. Now, we know that there are more chords than just tonic and dominant chords, so we're going to start to introduce those. And specifically, we are going to add them in a category called the predominant area because they come before the dominant pre dominant. So the way that's going to look, instead of just tonic, dominant, tonic, we now have tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic, and it serves as a transition to be like, hey, we're not, we can't really go back to tonic at this point. We're pushing forward, but it's not quite a cadence yet. It's not quite our dominant to tonic. So we're going to look at a number of predominant chords in this section. The first one we are going to look at is the one we're most familiar with, which is the four chord. In major, four is major. In minor, four is minor. So voice leading from one to four, the bass moves as it needs to, uh, as specified by, by the inversion. So root to root, one to four, root to first inversion, one to six, first inversion to root, three to four, first inversion to first inversion, three to six. So bass has to do what the inversion is. Keep the common tone. Boop, 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 boop. The other two voices move by step, three or flea to four and then five, two flicks, or six. This is just like ear tunes. Uh, nothing too weird to keep an eye out for. It just kind of goes. So I'll play these so you can hear them. That's your first inversion. So why did I change that to a G instead of having an E, F, like I had all the other times? This is an exception because if I had an E, F, moving by half step from three to four, that would be in parallel octaves with the bass. So that's why I changed it up there. And you'll notice that the other scale degree five does go up to six like it normally does. Then this last one, first inversion, first inversion. So then here's the same thing in minor. That same substitution in the soprano. First inversion to first inversion isn't super common. You usually use first inversions to smooth out the bass a little bit. So that's kind of the opposite of smoothing out the bass. So could happen. If it does, you know what to do. If needed, four can return to one. It would be exactly the same thing in reverse. But it's more common for four as a predominant chord to go on to five or five seven. And here we need to be careful. Contrary motion is going to be your friend, because if you just move everything using the law of laziness, you're going to get parallel fifths and octaves. So your bass goes from four to five. So four, one. If you move one up to two, you get parallel fifths, and that destroys the independence of the parts. You also have a parallel octave up here, so... That's certainly appropriate for some genres. Uh, particularly more modern and popular genres, for the purposes of what we're doing, we want the parts to be more independent. So, when the bass moves up by step, all the other voices are going to move down. So, one can go down to seven, six can go down to five, and four can't go down by step, so it skips down to two. So that's the most standard way of voice leading four to five. Then here we have the opposite sort of thing going on, where the bass moves down by step because it's in first inversion, and so all the other voices move up. And then this last one, we're moving to 5-7, so we don't have to worry about scale degree 4 skipping down because 4 can just stay as a common tone. We are omitting the 5th, scale degree 2, from this chord, but that's fine. We don't really need the 5th of the chord. So, same things in minor, that's bad. Because we're moving everything in parallel. This one's good, because the bass is moving up by step, the upper voices are moving down by step. Here, we've had to make a change, because if we went from A flat to B natural, that would be an augmented second. We want to avoid that, because that's hard to sing, we want to make these things easy to sing. 
So instead of doubling the A flat in our 4 6 chord, I've moved this up to a C, which also gives us complete triad. Not a bad thing. Then the last example, keep that comment. If it's possible to add a seventh onto your four chord, uh, it's not super common, but it does happen. If so, all you want to make sure is that you take your chordal seventh and you resolve it down by step. So a major, you have ah, oh, I'm sorry, four, six, two, and and four, six, one, and three. There's your chordal seventh resolved down by step to your five. That's just a regular 5 chord, not a 5-7 chord. Boop. Boop. Same thing in minor. Minor 7 to your 5 chord. So that's what's going on there. Take care, and I'll see you next time.